are so honored to be here with Comcast as we give away 250 Chromebooks to 250 of our incredible scholarship recipients. I was trying to find a way to be able to put some money together, be able to go buy a laptop. This is so cool. I'm really thankful. Getting internet essentials to our students was really critical to their success so that they can continue to stay enrolled at PCC. So the scholarship with the Chromebook absolutely sets me up for success. It was the right choice for me to choose PCC. It's really good school. Every community owes its existence and vitality to generations from around the world who contributed their hopes, dreams, and energy to making the history that led to this moment. Some were brought here against their will. Some were drawn to leave their distant homes in hope of a better life. And some have lived on this land for more generations that can be counted. Truth and acknowledgement are critical to building mutual respect and connection across all barriers of heritage and difference. We begin this effort to acknowledge what has been buried by honoring the truth. We are living on the ancestral lands of the Multnomah, Huasco, Kaulitz, Kathlamet, Clackamas, bands of the Chinook, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Molala, and many other tribes who made their homes along the Columbia River, creating communities and summer encampments. We pay respects to their elders past and present. Please take a moment to consider the many legacies of violence, displacement, migration, and settlement that brings us together here today. And please join us in uncovering such truths in any and all public events. I just wanted some instant Italian Cause I was getting hungry But I couldn't count all the coins it would take to I'm taking photos with my camera And besides these lovely new veggies I'm into fitness training with some grandma PCC has been covered Taking every class there is That's why I've had to apply For a generous scholarship
Welcome, and thank you for joining us in Portland, supporting Portland Community College tonight. Yo soy Ivan Hernandez, and I'm thrilled to be your host this evening. <laughs> and I'm Kelly Russell. I'm delighted to be here, and I'm so excited to serve as your auctioneer. It's because of generous donors like you all here tonight that Portland Community College can continue to grow and serve its community. Mm -hmm. PCC is the largest instu institution of higher education in Oregon, and the PCC Foundation provides critical scholarships to make student success possible. Last year, PCC Foundation had a record-breaking number of scholarship applications, around 2,500 to be exact, and this year the applications have increased to 3,000. The need has never mm -hmm. been greater. Yep, that's right. I am proud to say I attended PCC and received several scholarships during my time there. And as a first generation DACA student, I don't know what I would have done without those scholarships. And because of the support, I was able to land a job with the Hillsborough Hops professional baseball team. Go Hops! <laughs> y estoy tan emocionado. I'm really excited to be here with you, Kelly, and with everybody tonight, raising, student, uh, raising money for student scholarships and to connect to dream mm -hmm. and to hope again. Love it. We're very excited to be sharing this program with you all who are tuning in virtually. Yes. We want to give a special shout out to our partners hosting watch parties around the city. Thank you to Northwest Natural, Kim Morgan and Dragon Golf, the Greenbrier Companies, GBD Architects, Francois Bourdonek, Mandy Ellerson, and Catherine and Michael Farrell. Gracias, gracias. Before we get this evening started, we also like to give a big, big thanks to our presenting sponsor, Comcast. Yes. We are just so thrilled to be here with our partner, Portland Community College. We're so happy to be able to support their efforts in helping students get online and do the work that they need to do. We are able to make a difference right now in students' lives, helping them meet their basic needs. The Internet Essentials program was really created to try to bridge the digital divide. We know that there are barriers for folks getting access to the Internet. I just think that it's really cool giving more people an opportunity to go to college. Getting Internet Essentials to our students was really critical to their success so that they can continue to stay enrolled at PCC. Thank you, Comcast. And up next, President Mark Mitsui. You know, I was a presidential intern with President Mitsui during my time at PCC, and one of my biggest goals, don't tell anybody, <laughs> is to become president of Mexico one day. So to spend time with the president of PCC was one of the most memorable experiences when, during my time at PCC. You know, Ivan, I believe, I believe, I believe that you could become <laughs> the president of Mexico <laughs> someday. Thank I think you. that is an amazing, what an amazing opportunity to spend time with mm -hmm. President Mitsui. Oh, it was great. That's so fun. It really was. President Mitsui had a lot to do. I mean, you can imagine he was really busy, but he always made time to make me feel uh, seen and heard. And he always opened the door for me and the other students, uh, the other interns. Also, he opened the door for me and other student advocates to create the Dreamers Resource Center, the first one in the state. And the fact that the Dreamers Resource Center is still around today is a testament to his leadership. So. Everyone loves President Mitsui. <laughs> and he'd like to say a couple of words to you all tonight. Hello, I'm Mark Mitsui, president of Portland Community College. My pronouns are he, him, his. We're so glad you could join us tonight for PCC's fundraiser, Begin Again. It's an apt theme for springtime, and I bet you're now starting to see dandelion flowers pop up on lawns all around town. I look at dandelions and I don't see weeds, I see wishes. To me, they're a reminder of possibility and hope, especially after a long winter. At PCC, we believe in new beginnings. Students from all walks of life come to us because they want a fresh start. Recently discharged veterans marching toward a new purpose at home. Workers in their mid-50s who are laid off wondering if they still have a future. Recent high school graduates embarking on a life of independence. Immigrants and refugees in a new country trying to find their way. We take a chance on everybody. 
It's in our DNA. Our mission of equity and opportunity has never been more critical. Right now, as we inch closer to a post-pandemic future, we have a chance to rethink how we serve our community, to make sure our most marginalized have access to affordable education so the education gap doesn't grow wider. PCC will continue to reimagine and transform how we deliver access, like hybrid and remote learning. So things like lack of childcare, unreliable transportation and accessibility issues aren't a barrier. PCC students persist despite the challenges and with your support, the possibilities for their future are endless. I'm about to retire. Talk about beginning again. It's been one of the greatest honors of my life to serve as president of PCC and to witness the generosity you have all shown our students over the years. You've inspired me to create an endowed scholarship for those who have completed an on-ramp at one of our opportunity centers. These are workforce hubs where PCC provides wraparound service, support, and funding in a holistic way to serve some of our most marginalized students. I hope you'll join me in seeding new opportunities because when our students thrive, all of Oregon thrives. As I reflect on the immense challenges of the last few years, COVID-19 that has killed millions of people worldwide, an economic recession, the continued unearthing of systemic racism, global climate change, and now a brutal war in Europe, I still remain hopeful. These crises have afforded us the opportunity to better understand where we need to change. These crises have laid bare the gaps that we need to address. They've shown us that we must begin again, better, more equitably, more intentionally, more collaboratively. We don't have a choice, and that's what we do as humans. Even when it all feels like it's too much, we find a way to get back up, and we begin again. Thank you. And now, I'd like to introduce the recipients of our Patron Award. For over 10 years, the PCC Board of Directors has given the Patron Award to people or organizations that have made a significant contribution to ensure student success. This year, we'd like to highlight two inspiring leaders in our community, Anne Nato Campbell and Senator Margaret Carter. Anne Nato Campbell is a community philanthropist and daughter of the late real estate developer and civic leader, Bill Nato. She made a generous $1 million gift to support the Pathways to Opportunity program at PCC so that first-generation students, immigrants, and others facing financial barriers to college have equitable access. This year, the library on PCC's Southeast campus will be named in her family's honor. And Senator Margaret Carter is the first black woman to be elected to the Oregon legislature. Before she made history, she was a counselor and faculty member at PCC for 27 years. Both her children and grandchildren attended PCC. She's been a tireless advocate for education, served on the PCC Foundation Board of Directors as well as the Campaign for Opportunity Committee. She's known for her power to inspire those around her to give. If you've ever been to PCC's Cascade campus, I'm sure you've seen the Margaret Carter Technology Education Building. Please join me in honoring Ann Nato Campbell and Senator Margaret Carter for all they do for PCC and the wider community. Hi, my name is Emily and I am one of the seven daughters belonging to Margaret Carter. And we are focusing on her this evening. Um, We're here in her building, the Margaret Carter Technology Building. So, how are things going, Margaret? <laughs> well, things are going really well. And it's, it's really interesting to hear you call me Margaret because you call me Mommy so much. Oh, TMI. <laughs> You're not supposed to know that. <laughs> yeah, I want the world to know that. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm a mother good. first. Okay, you're yeah, right. You're exactly. Right. So, Mommy, you went to school here at PCC in 1968. Mm -hmm. Why did you come here? I was escaping domestic violence in Shreveport, Louisiana. 
and I had five little girls. And I knew the work I wanted to do required a professional degree. And so I wanted to be able to start anew with a life where my children were cared for and had the opportunity to get whatever kind of education I wanted them to have. Mm -hmm. Did PCC help shape your journey? Absolutely. It was really good for me, especially in the classroom, because I was not afraid to raise my hand. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I was not afraid to speak up and speak out. So we had a great group of, of women who mm -hmm. were mothers, who were workers, and who were returning to school. And so PCC helped further that leadership in me. So tell me, why are you passionate about supporting students? Emily, when I came to Oregon, I was so broken. Mm -hmm. Going through domestic violence, trying to raise my children, mm -hmm. and seeing other women being in the position that I was in, mm -hmm. there's no way I can sit still. There's no way I can sit home and not try to call people and get them engaged in the mission mm -hmm. of the community college system. But in terms of PCC, period, mm -hmm. That's where my love, that's where my passion mm -hmm. is for students going to school and becoming successful. And I had help with you guys. Right. I, I, I'm not ashamed to say mm -mm. that, you know, with nine children, I needed help yes. to uh, help send you guys to school. Mm -hmm. So that was important. And now I have grandkids that are going to PCC. Right. And I have a great granddaughter mm -hmm. that is going to PCC. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for being my mother. Thank you for your insight. Thank you for your future thinking. And you know, you have done a lot for a lot of people. My role as a mother is more important to me than anything I know of. Yeah. And to be able to have gracious kids mm -hmm. who allowed that to happen without making me feel guilty mm -hmm. was really a contribution that I don't think you guys realize how important it was. So. Thank you for that as well. I'm Bunny Valdez and I'm sitting in the PCC Southeast Campus Library, soon to be renamed the NATO Family Library. I'm here with Anne NATO Campbell in presenting the Patron Award for her donation to the PCC Scholarship Fund. Thank you, Bunny. It's so good to be here. My mantras be become, if not now, when? Because if the need is now, we should be giving now. Uh, we can't wait. We've, we've just had our, our, all of our lives just turned upside down with the pandemic, and many people lost their livelihoods, lost their jobs. We are, we're having to start all over. Mm -hmm. Every one of us has to start all over. 
trying to figure out how to make things better. I, I would not be in this position today if it had not been for all those different things and people that helped my grandfather as a young 17-year-old who came to, through Ellis Island, who came to Portland, Oregon um, as an immigrant from Japan. So many of us have had to start over during the pandemic, myself included. Is there an example in your life that you would like to give of a time that you had to begin again? I have started over many times in my life, um, but I've always stayed true to my core. I have my NATO family legacy is, is uh, at my core being, and it is the reason why I'm able to give uh, such gifts like to PCC. I think you can't do a better charitable gift than to give to PCC, especially at this time when so many people are struggling to figure out how they're able to put food on their table mm -hmm. at home. Would you like to ask me any questions? What is your dreams and aspirations? My aspirations are to be happy to have financial security and to be of service to society. So what I'm doing is I'm on my way to the University of Portland to get a degree in marketing and hoping that whatever career is meant for me is going to reveal itself in that time. From today on, you can do something fabulous. You can be, and, and it doesn't have to be big. It just has to come from your heart. And I think you're well on your way. I absolutely love that. From today, you can do something fabulous. And it doesn't have to be big. It just needs to come from your heart. Isn't that lovely? What mm -hmm. a wonderful, wonderful sentence. Thank love you, Bunny it. and Anne. Anne has that right. If not now, when? Friends, tonight we have the opportunity to raise money for the PCC Foundation to support their encouragement of lifelong learning, offering the highest quality secondary education to the eager students of the Portland community. And we cannot do it without your help. If you're ready to make a gift, you can navigate over to our donor page by going to pcc.edu slash begin again to make your gifts. And we are grateful for gifts in any amount. I have to admit that when I was a student at PCC, I was struggling mm -hmm. and when I received a scholarship, it allowed me to connect again with my goals and mm -hmm. my dreams and so many students at PCC feel the same way. Yeah. So up next is a story that shows how your support truly changes the lives of not only individuals, but also families. Mm -hmm. cousins but I think we're more like sisters because we're so close to each other. You got two chickens. <laughs> I don't even know how to cut the like in pollos. Being a first generation student we don't really have like anyone else that went to college or who to ask questions about. Honestly college was really not in like my mind, I didn't really think like, oh, college is gonna be a possibility. Like I kind of was like, oh, like I'm not capable of going to college. But of course I always had these two by my side, always going to school and getting good grades and showing me like, you know, it's possible, like we can do this. For me, I think like I did wanna to go to college because my parents did push that a lot on us. And I knew I was able to like school-wise and everything, but I was just more worried about like the financial side because it is really pricey. I was looking at my options for colleges around here and PCC was my best choice because Future Connect was going to cover everything and I was going to get like a coach and someone to help me and be there to support me. I think for me, PCC essentially like represents, I think, opportunity. My first term I got like pretty much all C's and that was really devastating for me. I really felt like, you know, this is not for me, like I'm not meant to be here. 
Um, and Future Connect, you know, my coach really, really made it clear, like you are meant to be here, you are capable. And I think um, if I probably wouldn't have gotten that pep talk, I probably wouldn't be here anymore. PCC, I think, has meant a lot because my first year, I found out I was pregnant. It was super scary. I didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I was really... I knew one thing. There was one thing I actually knew. I was like, I'm going to do college. I'm going to finish college. I started. I'm going to finish no matter what. How? I had no idea how. And then I went to Future Connect, and the like main priority was for them to know that I was going to be okay. PCC has helped me build connections as well as opening like new opportunities because we were able to apply to scholarships and transfer over to PSU. Right now we're all at PSU studying criminology and criminal justice. I would like to support like youth at risk with things that are challenging and be able to help them and support them in ways that I don't know, maybe someone hasn't been able to be there for them. I decided to take the legal route because I feel like that's really somewhere where I could make a huge impact. I feel like I've always been very vocal. I've always had to advocate for my mom and I, you know, since she's a single mother and um, her dominant language is uh, Spanish. Growing up, I saw a lot of my cousins be a part of like the juvenile justice system and I felt like they didn't always get like the support that they needed. Um, and I feel like, you know, as an attorney, I could be there to, you know, support other youth. I saw my older brother and then my younger siblings go deal with the system and um, there was areas that needed improvement. I currently work at an assessment center with juveniles and it's definitely helping me look at where I can possibly help and it's super important to have someone who represents the community and have someone there who looks like you or just is able to talk to parents and have that same like cultural background and be able to understand the youth or the family and be able to help and support. I think getting the money from Future Connect made a huge impact on us. We probably wouldn't be where we are now if we wouldn't have gotten that funding. Money is like a big barrier that a lot of us are facing and if we were to have more help with scholarships and stuff, a lot of us would be willing to attend college and take the steps to like having a better, brighter future. Our families are really proud of us and how far we have come. One big thing that keeps me going is my daughter and knowing that it's just us and I'm going to do it for us and I'm going to be able to help her along the way and like be essentially like a role model and be able to help like she's going to be able to turn to me and be like hey mom can you help me with college and she's going to have someone. I can't wait to get my bachelor's and like walk the stage you know and see my mom like be super proud I'm usually I don't like when she cries when she's happy but I want like I'm not going to be mad if she cries when I get my bachelor's because I probably will too so. <laughs> What an inspiring and dedicated family. I'm so excited to see how far you all go. Friends, now's the time for us to come together and support the great work of PCC Foundation. And if you're ready to make a gift, please go to pcc.edu slash begin again to make your gifts. Now, some of you may be on this page streaming this event. If you are, you can scroll to the top and click give now in the menu and then give now or give online and follow the prompts to make your gift right now. And all of our donors out there, we so appreciate your support of the PCC Foundation. We want to give a special shout out to our friend Barbara Raznu, who is offering a challenge to all of our viewers. Barbara said, I want to match the first 20 gifts of $250 tonight. So if you can make a gift of $250 tonight, you can know that it will be matched by Barbara and turned into $500 for the PCC Foundation. We want to say a big thank you to you, Barbara. So friends, grab your phones or open a new browser window so that you can still follow along with our program. All you have to do is go to pcc.edu slash begin again to make your gifts. And we thank you all for your continued support. PCC students dream a day dream big. <laughs> Here's a story about a single dad who never stopped giving up even when it seemed impossible.
first computer I ever touched was in middle school. It was one of those Macs that had those stick figure games that I could play once I was done with my assignment. I just thought they were the coolest thing. And I was good at using computers too. I understood how they worked and I liked learning about them. As I got older, people would come to me with their tech issues and I'd help them out. And everything's all good. I liked problem solving and saving people money. It just felt good when people were like, hey, thanks man, <laughs> you know, I think you saved me a lot of money. They would have charged me 500 for this. People saw me as smart. I was needed. I started using drugs with my friends in high school. The hard stuff, that came later. My buddy gave me a hit of meth and it was just like, bye bye from there. I gave up, I gave up everything. For 20 years, my life was on pause. My first son, Sylvester, had his first birthday while I was in jail. He come to visit, and once he was trying to touch me through the plastic divider. He was looking everywhere, trying to climb under the table, go around, and then when he couldn't do it, he started tripping because he couldn't get to his dad. It was rough, and I don't want him to ever go through that again. You can't love nobody unless you love yourself first. So when I got out of jail and was given the chance to go to treatment, I wasn't gonna waste it. The first day I walked into the recovery center, I felt so welcome. I didn't feel like I was a low life piece of garbage because I was an addict. The counselors, they all had love for me. They actually cared. And my first day I went on a hike and I started learning about myself through classes at the treatment center. And I was like, I can do this. And I wanted to do more, you know, and get back on track with my life. PCC was nearby and computers were my thing, so it made sense that I pursue cybersecurity. Setting up servers, configuring people's systems, work that would allow me to spend more time with my boys. At PCC, I had a math teacher who made me feel like I could do this, an advisor who helped me make a plan, more people who cared. Then the pandemic hit, I was working, then I wasn't working anymore. Unemployment checks took months. My sister first told me about PCC scholarships and I'm not a lucky person, but then I figured, you know, like, why not? Let's roll the dice. I got it and thought, is this really happening? I never thought I'd be here. Getting that scholarship gave me more pep in my step. It made me feel more powerful. I can't mess up now. I got a 4.0 straight A's. I'm a single dad and sometimes the boys and I do our homework after school. I'm figuring out my math problems and they're figuring out theirs. My addiction is always in the shadows lurking, reminding me that all it takes is one slip up and I won't slip up. I'm in the right place now, and I stay busy, I'm patient. I don't need instant gratification. I'm really hungry to show my kids how it's done and continue being their hero. Keep your eye on the ball. I want to show Sylvester and Silas I can do this, that their dad is working hard and it's paying off. We're gonna get a house and that dog my oldest son wants. I'm not gonna waste this chance. I gotta keep moving forward. It's amazing to see the commitment that Sly had to continue to reach his dreams, no matter what obstacle crossed his path. Now you can support the dreams of students and help them reach the goals that may seem out of reach. We know any goal with hard work and determination can be attained. 
So let's help make more dreams come true with continued giving tonight. Every dollar makes a difference in the lives of our students, and we want to welcome any a gift amount that is meaningful to you. I love when leadership sees the impact of their commitment, so much so that they are drawn to support with a gift. It's a gift of love. And we want to say a huge thank you to Vice President Kim Morgan and Dragon Golf for their gift tonight of $3,000. Thank you for believing and dreaming with our students. Friends, grab your phones or open a new browser window and make your gift. Go to pcc.edu slash begin again to support these amazing dreamers. Wow, thank you so much for your generosity. I love seeing the community come together. And speaking of coming together, when I was at PCC, I was always in awe of the fact that people of all races, genders, classes, ages, and abilities were in one classroom together. You know what we all had in common? We had hope. Let's hear from a student at PCC who learned to hope again at PCC. My whole life I've loved art and I've loved to paint. Watercolor is my favorite. When I paint I think about the um, impermanence. Everything here is, is temporary and for me it really helps me focus in and treasure all that I have in the moment in, in the present because I know it's fleeting and it will pass. And it helps me cope with my disease too. Um, living with a progressive form of MS. People with disabilities, they're amazing. Um, they are strong because they have to be, right? And having a disability, um, creates a lot of really unique skills in somebody. Um, for instance, I am an amazing problem solver. Like I have to be very, very creative and quick and not get upset when I see a problem, right? Just think, okay, how, how can I solve this? How can I get around it? I was working um, a retail job and um, my MS was progressing and I was facing a lot of ableism to be quite honest and especially in the workplace and I wasn't able to get accommodated and I lost my job and I had difficulty finding new employment and so I decided to go back to school and find out what I could do to help that situation. I love art and I thought initially if I could get a degree in art and somehow have a position in the community, have a visible position of employment just by virtue of that, it would break down a lot of the stereotypes about disabilities. I was really involved with disability services uh, the first year and for my second year at PCC I got um, offered a job as an accessibility advocate. I have been able to do so much as an accessibility advocate. It's been a dream. Um, like the Accessibility First Employment Week. I'm trying to get employers to think about disability differently and think about disability creatively and all the benefits that somebody that lives with a disability can bring to the workplace. What those accommodations look like, why they should be made, why it's helpful to make them and what it looks like when you have a supportive inclusive environment for somebody to thrive. For persons with disabilities, the pandemic made things incredibly accessible. I could not have done a fraction of what I've done if I wasn't able to do this remotely. Having a disability um, 
things are harder and slower physically for me, um, just like logistically. For instance, using a wheelchair, the time it takes for me to get my coffee, to take a shower, to get to my car, to get loaded into my car and wheel across campus and to a class or something. That's a lot of work and it's exhausting. And it also takes a lot of time. And I'm, I'm really afraid that all this is gonna go away. It's night and day my life, you know, to even have the opportunity to get like some work experience and to get like a good job and to get like off of disability and like not live in poverty anymore. I will graduate next year. And when I do, I will have two years of work experience in the field that I want to work in. I will have my associate's degree. If I didn't have the PCC Foundation Scholarship, I would have had to take out a student loan. And um, so yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge impact in my life. A college education is something that I always aspire to. It's been a dream of mine. I might cry, <laughs> sorry. Um, this is something that I've wanted my whole life and something that I've tried to get my whole life. And, it just um, wasn't always available to me. Before the pandemic, before PCC, this, my life was so different. And this is the life that I've always dreamed of, at least I'm getting close to it. Hope is the engine that drives us to greatness, and it is a privilege to see all of the great work Precious has been doing at PCC and beyond. And we see it every day at PCC. You can help us inspire more students with your gifts. Simply grab your phones or open a new browser window and go to pcc.edu slash begin again to make your contributions. Let's inspire more hope for our students. And I see that Francois Bordenek wants to join us with an inspiring gift of her own. Thank you so much, Francois, for your gift of $1,000. Perhaps you want to join Francois with a gift of your own, a gift of your own $1,000. Or maybe you want to be one of 10 folks who join together to make a gift of $100 to match the gift of Francois. One thing I know for sure is it is time to connect again, dream again, and hope again. And we can do it together when we all begin again. So join us on this journey with a gift. Again, simply grab your phones or open a new browser window and go to pcc.edu slash begin again to make your contributions online tonight. We are so grateful for all of your support. And while you make your gifts, take a peek at our next short video. Kelly, did you know that PCC is only the fourth college nationwide to become B Campus USA certified? I did not know that, Yvonne. Well, PCC is a leader in sustainability thanks to President Mitsui. We are all working together to make something sweet. PCC has lots of partnerships in the community who support the, the work we do, including the sponsors of tonight's event. Thank you to all of our sponsors for helping make tonight's event a success.
thank you to all of our incredible sponsors. That is amazing. I love this. One last reminder before we end this evening is that uh, for those of you who are interested in our golden ticket, $100 will buy you a chance to win a stay at the Stephanie Inn at Cannon Beach and six bottles of fine wine from good fellow family sellers. Isn't that fun? Only 100 tickets will be sold and ticket sales close at 10 p.m. on Monday, April 25th. So tickets are available online at our website, pcc.edu slash begin again. So get yours now before they are sold out. Friends, that wraps up our programming for tonight's fundraiser, but the giving doesn't have to stop. This video will live at this site, and we invite you to share the video with your friends your, and your family so that they can learn more about the great work of PCC Foundation. Thank you so much for your generous support of Portland Community College. Yvonne? As someone who has benefited from the love and support of donors like you, muchísimas gracias desde el fondo de mi corazón. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You have invested not only in one person's future, but the future of our community. On behalf of the incredible staff and students at PCC, gracias for your support. And on behalf of Kelly and myself, <laughs> thanks for helping PCC students and our community to begin again. Buenas noches y hasta la próxima. Until the next one. <laughs>